So it must be kind of like situations where the kid may be um, maybe lying or, or tainting the truth. So I think um, reasoning through talking to them um, about the consequences of what lying does, how it can impact them and impact others, um, and then also just maybe continuing to give positive reinforcements for when they're, they're making good decisions. Sometimes as a parent we, we forget to reinforce the things that we think they should be doing anyway, um, but kids need to hear that, um, those kind of positive reinforcements to help them um, continue to make those good decisions that we're, that we're proud of and we're happy um, that they're doing all along, as opposed to kind of distorting the truth or um, being um, untruthful about uh, situations. So learning disabilities um, are very, very prevalent um, in America. Anywhere between 5 and 10% of Americans may have some type of learning disability. Um, the most common learning disability we see is going to be one um, with re impacting reading, um, comprehension, reading fluency, and language, those kind of areas. They all fall under the same hat. Um, those um, specific type of learning disabilities and other types non-related to reading are not going to become apparent usually until a child enters school. Um, they start to have more um, academic demands and so kindergarten sometimes they won't necessarily become apparent but as their um, academic rigors become more, um, there's more demands on their ability to um, learn how to read and then eventually learn, um, using reading to learn, so that's more of the middle school age, these um, kind of uh, areas where the child is falling behind their peers will become um, more apparent. Um, and so some signs that you might see that a child has a learning disability, um, the first one would be you see kind of increased learning effort. And so sometimes the kids will say things like school is boring or they um, have anxiety associated with school and they're trying to avoid school. Um, we call that school avoidance. Um, sometimes the child will um, compensate and try to deflect attention to their maybe deficiencies in certain areas by being the class clown. Um, and so um, looking for those behaviors as well. Um, and then so the, the child who's taking a very long time to complete assignments and homework, much longer than their peers, um, maybe because they're having a hard time processing the information that, that they are reading or um, um, learning about. And so those are kind of warning signs. And you really want to catch um, these early before the child actually goes on to having what we call academic failure, um, where they are failing the grades, failing school, or talking about remediation. Um, because the, the chance to intervene um, earlier is going to be better for their outcomes later on. Um, other signs of learning disability, so failing grades, um, increasing absences, you've seen a, um, also a child who's maybe socially disengaged with their peers, um, maybe because they're feeling like they're not fitting in or they're feeling quote unquote stupid, um, sometimes I hear kids use those, those terms, um, so that's when you would want to suspect it. So next thing is you have to think about it before you can test for it. Um, you can't test very young, young children for learning disabilities because you have to be able to um, compare them to their peers and they have to be able to complete um, uh, certain tests. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. The school districts, um, all public school districts in the United States, um, will perform um, learning disability testing. Um, and a lot of these, uh, well, these are all, uh, have become like federal laws um, to kind of help make sure that children aren't falling behind and help sure, help ensure that children with disabilities are appropriately being tested and getting um, instruction and education that fits their needs. Um, so the school district can do an evaluation. Um, and some families may choose to have a private psychologist or neuropsychologist do an evaluation as well. They both do very similar things. Um, I think it's important to, no matter what you do, make sure you're working with a whole team of, of people. And that team does include and, and foremost their school environment, their teachers, um, counselors at school, um, any um, sub-specialists in the school district such as speech pathologists or physical therapists, occupational therapists that the child um, might need. Um, so the child will undergo some um, an evaluation to determine if they do have a learning disability. So the learning disability I think is important to understand what the definition is. Um, it means that the child's intellectual dis uh, abilities so their IQ um, is not, um, and their performance is not re matching up to what their IQ is, um, what they should be able to do based on their um, intellectual knowledge. Um, and so we look to see if they're falling behind in school, among their peers, um, or for their grade level. Um, and if, they, if there is a significant discrepancy between their IQ and their performance in those areas, that is considered a learning disability, and then they would be able to qualify for special education services in schools.
it, it shouldn't be um, just focused on the child. Um, the best interventions work by changing the whole dynamics of the family because otherwise the child feels that they're being singled out. So trying to do and engage things together with your child. Um, trying a variety of activities um, can be helpful. Um, sometimes in, um, in America especially we get very um, fixated on sports and team sports and stuff like that. Maybe your child would be better at an individual sport um, with their strengths. Um, maybe it's not necessarily a sport per se in an organized uh, manner, but doing things like going for walks or going for bike rides. Um, those are all things you can do to get your child um, more engaged. But try to do it together or find something with your child's interest. Usually you can find something that you know your child is very interested in and, and kind of pivot off of that and try to engage in activities related to their interests. I'm not aware of any that I would recommend because um, it is a pretty complex uh, process and these people that um, not only administer the tests are, are psychologists and, and then they have to, there's a very complex interpretation of the test. It's not like um, an adult IQ test that sometimes you see on the internet that people will take. Um, but there's different types of IQs in different areas that they would be evaluating. So written expression, um, uh, verbal understanding, comprehension, math, um, kind of all those things that they're looking at. Your brain needs energy and it needs, your brain um, works on, on, on sugar. Anything that we eat is going to be converted into sugar for our brain to use. And if a child is not getting a nice, uh, good sustained um, re release of source of energy throughout the day, they're going to be dipping into their stores. And as they're dipping into their stores, there may be kind of lower glucoses and that's not giving your brain the energy it needs and nobody's going to be able to perform that well. Um, so trying to make sure a child gets breakfast or is getting breakfast um, at school um, as they, and they may qualify for some breakfasts there. Those are really, really important things to make sure that kids getting a good start to the day. The best things is teaching your child resiliency early on. Um, and so that is a very hard thing, thing to do, I think, as a parent because those, the resiliency skills are developed when a child fails, actually, and a child learns how to get through um, something that they're not succeeding at um, and be able to come to a good outcome. And so that starts really early. Think about your child when they're first learning how to walk. You want to run out and catch them. You don't want them to fall down and be hurt, but you have to hold yourself back a little bit because they're going to work through it. And those are the same skills that, that you have to use as a parent going forward. So teaching your child that you, they have a supportive, loving environment, um, but also setting up expectations that you would want them um, to um, succeed and to try their hardest. Um, now they're gonna, um, there's inevitably gonna be times that they, um, they want you to come in and help and fix the situation, and those are times that you can kind of hold yourself back a little bit. You can offer a um, listening ear and being, um, being there to support them, but also letting them kind of work through those problems they're having, whether it's um, academics or sports or with friends. Um, those are ways, actually, that will translate into success in school because they won't always give up when things get hard. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the hardest things that you can teach a child, but it's something that it will pay off with time if they learn to kind of persist when things get hard. We call that grit and resiliency. Those are, those are the buzzwords that are really popular now and on the news lately.